Kremlin propaganda is increasingly declaring the threat from the Ukrainian Armed Forces Combat Aviation, which was recently replenished with American F-16 fighters. Russian propagandist Olga Skabeeva told Russians live on air that according to publications in Western media, the Pentagon has allowed Ukraine to carry out military strikes using fighters on Russian territory. Skabeeva quoted a statement by White House National Security Council spokesman John Kirby, who said that at the first stage, the fighters would reinforce the work of the Ukrainian air defense. However, over the next three weeks, the aircraft would be prepared for military sorties and strikes against the Russian Federation. The propagandist also reported that by the end of the year, Ukraine will receive several dozen more fighters, the total number of which, at the disposal of NATO countries, reaches several thousand, which means that the taboo on endless war has been lifted. Recall after more than a year of waiting, F-16s finally fly in the Ukrainian skies. As expected, the F-16s will serve, first of all, to boost Ukraine's sky shield. The Air Force will likely treasure its first handful, likely no more than 10, of valuable jets and keep them away from dangerous Russian air defenses. Their value may grow as the rest of the roughly 80 pledged jets roll in in the coming years, presenting a potential for a broader scope of tasks. The weaponry visible on the two presented F-16s suggests they are likely to be used primarily for air defense purposes. According to the Telegraph, they have already carried out this task in Ukrainian skies. Even if the other F-16s Ukraine receives are better suited for ground targets, Kyiv will likely be limited by the restrictions on strikes deep within Russian territory. Washington already said it made no changes to its policy after the arrival of F-16s, meaning US-made arms can be used only on Ukrainian territory or just across the Russian border. While Denmark and the Netherlands indicated that Ukraine would be able to use their F-16s to strike targets inside Russian airspace as self-defense, many such announcements made by the Western allies in the past have proven hollow. Belgium, in turn, said their F-16s are for use within Ukrainian airspace only. During a massive strike on Ukraine on July the 31st, Russian occupiers used a North Korean-made ballistic missile. The launch was recorded from Russian territory in the direction of Bila Servka. The missile simply fell on the territory of the Kiev region, probably after exploding in the air. This was reported by Defense Express, citing its own sources. At the crash site of this missile, debris with markings were found that match the previously discovered remains of KN-23 ballistic missiles, which the Russian Federation used to strike Ukraine in early 2024. The last recorded instance of Russian use of North Korean-made KN-23 ballistic missiles to strike Ukraine was on February the 27th, 2024. Consequently, the Russians have resumed using long-range missile weapons from the North Korea after a pause that lasted five months. One of the monitoring publics reported on the probable launch of an enemy ballistic missile in the direction of the Kyiv region on the night of July the 31st, 2024. At the same time, an assumption was made about the probable use of Iskander, but this was not officially confirmed. It is known that the North Korean ballistic missiles that the Russian Federation received at its disposal for strikes on Ukraine have warheads with high explosive equipment, the power of which is up to 1,000 kilograms in TNT equivalent. At the same time, the established maximum launch range of these missiles is up to 650 kilometers, the publication writes. In May 2024, the Prosecutor General's office reported that our experts had examined the remains of 21 of the 50 North Korean ballistic missiles that Russia had fired at Ukraine at that time. The remains of the KN-23 were found in Kyiv and the Kyiv region, Donetsk, Kirovorad, Poltava and Kharkiv regions. More than half of the KN-23 missiles lost their programmed flight path during the flight and probably exploded in the air since the launch of these missiles was recorded, but their fragments were not found. 